I'm Ken. I'm going to do a deployment of OpenZD to EC2. I suppose any VPS will work. I've made a little outline here and I'm going to leave these milestones as bookmarks on the video as well so you can skip to the part that you're interested in. Probably not too interested in this first bit. It's very mundane and routine, but I didn't want to cut anything out. Uh, so here we go. These are the security group rules that I used when I did the first step to launch the instance. And we only need three ports. SSH, obviously, to get there. Although we could close that off later once we have OpenZD up and running. Because it does let you tunnel. And we need two more ports. One for the ZD controller, one for the router. So I'm just going to use 80 and 443. They are very common ports, so... There's actually some advantage to using common ports since they are less likely to be blocked by a really paranoid corporate firewall or something. Do I need to install anything else? Probably not. I'm going to need to install Docker. Um, only thing I did to configure my shell and tmux was just set preferences there. Nothing important, but as a reminder to myself. Now, we've installed package updates. No, we did not. We only updated the metadata. So I'll just make sure that everything is up to date. Cool, so we already had the latest kernel, so I won't need to reboot. Now let me go grab the Docker install instructions from the web browser. I'll just copy this. So we're going to trust Docker's signing key. We are going to subscribe to their Debian source and update again. Then we'll do the install step. Install the latest version, run this. Great. And then after that is done, We'll be able to do the hello world test. I'm also going to want to add myself to the Docker group. For now, we can run it with sudo. Get the image. Looks good. So I'm going to run a, a command here to add myself to the Docker group. We're going to append a new group for myself. So it doesn't show up right away, but it does if I say new group, but then I lose my shell history. So I think I'll go back out, write my shell history, then go in and I should have everything. Okay, just in case I need it. All right, what's next on the checklist? We've got Docker installed. We need to deploy the ZD controller. So I'll start with the documentation. Uh, by the way, this was just the EC2 dashboard. I don't think I'm gonna need it, but it was a T2 medium, which is a dual core, four gigs of RAM. Nothing special, really. I, I chose mostly defaults. I know I could run it on a much smaller VPS, but I figured it might save me some time to give it a little bit more power. I'll just make that small. All right, so we're done installing Docker, and these are the OpenZD docs. We're going to go down to Deployments, Docker, Controller. All right, so this provides a general purpose compose file. Just have to find it in this document. There's the controller image that we're going to use. And what else do we need? 
yeah, so here's a, a really short script that would bring it up for us. We could use this. Uh, we could certainly use this to go ahead and get the compose file. And I think I'm going to give that a different name. Let's make a directory for ZD. Let's actually make this a, a Git repository. Well, I'm going to make that. I'm going to set my uh, global to main. There we go. So now we're on main. Initial commit is being composed. We want to get this compose file. Only I think I will save this as um let's see we'll just do controller compose yaml all right and for the purposes of this project we're going to need an env file and i'll just go ahead and configure our compose project to have two compose files controller compose yaml and router compose yaml so I know I'm going to eventually have those two save and close that all right so that's not covered here because this guide is only for the controller and this guide right below it is only for the router but what I'm giving you right now is the combination of doing both one after the other on the same host all right so this would be the bare minimum set of inputs to get this up and running so I'll just use that as an example go back into my env environment file we'll just edit this I think I already mentioned it but in just in case uh, this is just a domain name that I created in my DNS pointing to the public IP of the EC2 instance so we're going to need a ZD password for our default administrator. Let's go ahead and generate one. This is like my favorite little command for generating a password. Oh, I forgot to highlight it. I think, no, that won't work. Got a, oh, come on, VI. Highlight, bang, paste. There we go. And so we've got our password, we've got our address, and we also need to set some, uh, we also need to, to tell the uh, compose the uh, container image when it starts up that we're using a certain port uh, because it's got to align with our firewall. Um, we told it to use, we told the firewall to allow 80 and 443 right here, standard ports for those. So we got to use those ports. All right, so I better go check out the documentation to find how to set that. Oh, that's right, I've got the compose file itself, so I can just look in there. Let's see, port, so it's ZD control, advertised port. Yep, 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 okay. So I'll put that on my clipboard. The default is 1280, and we'll use 443. Cool. And we'll add some more stuff in there for the router um, once we get to that point. So I think we're ready to go ahead and say compose up. But I'm second guessing myself because I, I did put in the router part prematurely. 
So I'll just save that for later. For now, we only have a controller. Docker compose up, see what happens. I suppose, yeah, we could have used the default compose file names, compose YAML, compose override YAML, then we wouldn't need the compose um, file environment variable, but no harm. I'm gonna go ahead and install the ZCLI on this computer so I can talk to the controller directly. Go to Downloads, Linux, ZDCLI, there we go. Okay, got the ZDCLI. And so now we can follow the next step in the instructions for deploying the controller and run our login command. So this will be ZD Edge login and test username admin, password. I guess I'll use an environment variable. I'll just have to define the, var the variable. I'm going to trust the certificate on first use. Yep. All right. Uh, let's see. Source env and log in. So now we have our default admin and we're ready to start adding more stuff. Watch is not yet configured. I'm not sure what that means. Oops. I hit control C. So that did bring down the controller, but we'll just go ahead and run it in the background. And follow the log. So we can see what's happening. I don't know if we'll need it, but there's the information. All right, we've got a controller up, so now let's make a router. Yep, good, the instructions are right here. We, for the standalone example, just a regular router there's the image we're going to be running, and we need to get the compose file. We'll just name that as a router compose file. So here's everything that we have now. Go ahead and change our compose file, our compose project to include both of those. And what else? Here's some more configuration variables. I'll just paste those in there so I can work with them. See if there's anything else we need to set. <clears throat> so we're gonna need our enrollment token, which we'll get as soon as we create the router. Let's see, let's do that right now. That was the very first step, I actually skipped that. So I'm going to run that, but I'll put the JWT on the tempter since we're not even going to need it again after this. I'll put this on my clipboard. Actually, no, I'll just bring it in here. There's that. Okay, so I'm just assigning the enroll token to that complete value. Now we have to tell the router where to look for our controller. Oh, we've already got that value in there, so we don't need to say it again. Now the control advertise port, we've already got that uh, from the controller install. But our router advertised address is going to be the same there. Router advertised 
address is just the domain name. Yeah, okay. That'll be the same value. And then our ZD router port will be port 80, since we have only 40, 443 and 80 open. Save and close that. See if I missed anything. Okay. I think we're good on the router. Oh, yeah, this terminal isn't actually enabled, so I'll just go up here and say up again. So now it's going to download the router image. The error in the bottom was because I hadn't said new group. But I'll go ahead and do that so I can run Docker commands in this uh, directory as well. Well, in this pane and tmux as well. All right, so we have a router, we have a controller. They both claim to be healthy. This one's only been up for one second though, the router. So let's take a look at the logs. So yeah, we're seeing logs from both. Oops, the router exited. So something isn't right. Oh, you know what? When I created, I, I don't know if I gave it the right option. Yeah, the router is restarting. So let's isolate these logs to just show us the router. You gotta spell it right. Tunneler mode, okay, so ensure tunneler mode. So when I did create the router, I didn't say tunnel enabled. So we're gonna need to update that. Okay, so here's the symptom you might run into. Ensure tunneler mode is enabled. The problem is list identities, sure, but we wanna list edge routers. So this router is not online because it can't start because it is not tunneler enabled. Now that doesn't show up as a column here, but if we were to uh, send out, look at all the, the JSON here, then it, it'll show up. Is tunneler enabled is false. That's our problem. Okay, sorry for the, the data, but uh, let's go ahead and update this router. Update edge router. Router one, still can't spell it. Tunneler enabled. Okay, so that looks like it worked. Now tunneler enabled is true. I'll just tell it to start again. Okay, it still says tunnel unable to authenticate a controller. Ensure tunneler mode is enabled or disable the tunnel listener. Well, it's possible that my, my container didn't fully restart. Oh uh, yeah, I think that was it. It just hadn't restarted. We were just printing the same old log over and over again. But now that it's restarted, it's up and happy. That was a little confusing. Online true. Okay, fumble, but got it. All right, now we have a controller and a router online. 